Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Technical Tuesdays. This is the series where we explore how different parameters within injection molding can have an effect on the final part of the product. In this episode, we're going to explore the importance of cooling time and how changing it can have an effect on the final part. If you haven't already, watch our previous video where we explore the importance of packing pressure on the success of the final part. I appreciate we've gone over this before, but I'd like to run through the stages of injection molding again. If you've watched our previous videos, hopefully you'll know that the polymer being used is gravity fed into a heated barrel where a screw will push it towards the mold. The barrel heats the solid plastic into a liquid to allow it to be injected into the shaped cavity in the mold tool. Injection speed and pressure then push the molten plastic into the mold. Packing pressure then ensures that all cavities in the mold are filled and the molten polymer is condensed as much as possible. Once the plastic has filled the entire mold, we then have to wait for the polymer to cool. As with anything, as the plastic cools, it also shrinks, which must be accounted for in the tool design. Due to some sections containing thicker walls than others, the shrinking process can sometimes be uneven, which can lead to sink marks and warpage. In order to avoid this, we cool the plastic evenly, and to do this, we use cooling circuits which run through the mold tool. These work by running heated water through the circuit, which is designed to pass through key sections of the mold to ensure that the cooling is even across the entire part. The example we're going to look at in this episode is a smoke detector, which you may remember from our first episode. The smoke detector uses light gates and infrared beams, which have to pass through a clear lens made from a polycarbonate with a flame retardant additive. If any smoke manages to break the beam and it stops being received by the smoke detector, the alarm will be set off. In order for the product to work correctly, it's imperative that the lenses allow the infrared to pass through uninterrupted. If there's any warpage in the lens, it could stop the beam from being detected by the smoke detector. If we reduce the cooling time on these lenses, you can see that the part is still flexible whilst being ejected from the tool. When these parts are finally ejected, using a bit of force, they warp and twist as they cool. If these parts were to be used in the smoke detector, it would definitely lead to a product failure. If we were to increase the cooling time on the lenses, you'd find that this doesn't have any effect on the part. A two or three second increase in cycle time may not seem like much, but when you're producing millions of parts, this can end up costing your customer a lot of time and money. To achieve even cooling with the correct cooling time, the temperature of the water in the cooling circuit must be adjusted depending on the polymer being used. For polycarbonate, it's normally recommended that the water is around 90 degrees Celsius. For softer polymers like TPE, it's normally recommended that you use chilled water. The goal is always to produce the highest quality product with the shortest cycle time to ensure that your customers are paying the least amount possible for the best possible product. So that wraps it up for our episode on cooling time. As always, we hope you learned something. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please let us know down below. Other than that, we'll see you guys in the next episode.